so-called Islamic State has lost almost all the territory it once held in the Middle East. But Interpol is warning that fighters are continuing to pose a threat as they return home or move to other global hotspots. And the group has also been blamed for inspiring attacks abroad by radicalising people online, of course. In fact, homegrown terrorism remains one of the hardest threats to detect and prevent. Well, a brief time ago, we were joined from Davos by Jürgen Stock. He is Interpol's Secretary General. And I asked him where he thinks the bulk of the Islamic State fighters go once they've left Syria. We see that uh, a lot of uh, these fighters who have been joining in into the fight, so we, we think about, about 40,000 um, from almost 100 countries, that they are now, um, some of them, returning to their home countries, some of them remain in the conflict zone as a part of the insurgency, and others might uh, travel to other parts of the world and join terrorist groups in, in this part of the world. So. Um, the sharing of relevant police information to uh, track this uh, travel activities to build a kind of global early warning system is more important than ever because, again, this, this has now really become a global threat. But, of course, the best intelligence will be in Raqqa, in Syria and in Mosul, in Iraq. How easy is it to get to that kind of information? I think we are now um, having to, we have developed a strong uh, cooperation um, with the uh, counter ISIL coalition, for instance. And one of the projects now under the umbrella of this cooperation is that we try to translate battlefield information, those information uh, that's still on the battlefield, um, that we translate this military information into law enforcement uh, information in close cooperation with our Interpol National Central Bureaus. Uh, and to provide this information uh, for our global uh, police community of 192 member countries and to make possible that this information is available at the front lines of policing, for instance, at border stations or even in the hands of individual uh, beat officers who are conducting checks of persons or cars uh, in the streets uh, of any major city uh, or in any other hotspot. Mr. Stock, what about the realm of cyber security? Because a lot of the terror threat is now moving online. Are you getting the help you need from social media organizations whose platforms are often used by terrorists? I think we have made a lot of progress, uh, again, incorporating with the private sector, specifically with uh, the internet service providers. There are a lot of uh, political initi initiatives now going on under the umbrella, for instance, of the G7 ministers of the interior. That's one of the examples um, where Interpol tries to play its role as a facilitator of information exchange uh, and to make this information available to our member countries and to translate this information into concrete action. Also, with regards to the Internet, which is still playing a role, not just in providing propaganda uh, and being a kind of university for terrorists, providing uh, those information, how to build bombs and other things, that, that requires also a strong cooperation with the private sector. And how great would you say is the terror threat now at the start of 2018? I think that the, the, the threat level currently, the problem is that we have a really a global dimension and we have a, a multi-layered um, threat level currently. That means we see a lot of terrorists traveling around the world. Um, they are battle hardened, if I may say. They are sometimes brutalized from, from the conflicts that have taken place, the fights that, that have taken place. They are well connected um, internationally. They are, of course, using modern technologies. So the threat is more international and more complex than ever. And that, of course, is a, is a, a, a real challenge for law enforcement. But that requires a, a new level of information sharing. And that's exactly what Interpol uh, is about, supported, for instance, by the UN Security Council, the last Resolution 2396 from December in encouraging the member countries of Interpol using uh, our platform, our 17 databases uh, to improve our, um, our information, for instance, biometric information about terrorists and suspects, but also making sure that this information is accessible at the front lines of policing. Jürgen Stock there, the Secretary General of Interpol in Davos.